Hello, I'm Tobias Lind. I'm gonna show you the starter build I took to Pro Tour number one in New Jersey. I'm gonna show you all the cards where we play them. I'm gonna show you the starter matchup, the prism matchup, and the chain matchup, how we sideboard and why. And uh, down below you can find the entire deck and everything you need to sideboard in. Uh, so in this build we're running uh, uh, 12 of, uh, of the elements except for Earth. We're running uh, three Channel Lake Frigids, three Winter's Grasp, three Ice Encounter, two Blizzard, one Frostfang. The reason we don't run any of the non-attacks ice cards except our Channel Lake Frigid, Frigid is because we want to be able to side out all the non-attacks against Chain so we don't get hit, hit by Invert Existence. Uh, for Lightning we're running Blink, uh, the absolute best card. Action points is the reason why you play Starvo over Olden, at least in my point. Uh, Heaven's Claws is a block 3. Flash, you can get, gain Go again. And uh, Lightning Surge is a zero attack. Works really good with extra, extra action points from Flash or from Blink. For the Earth cards, uh, this is where we've cut some. So we're down to four red cards. We're running three Evergreens and one Break Round. And on the blue slots, we're doing the three Break Rounds and uh, three Evergreens. Uh, we've cut as many Earth cards as possible to fit in more, uh, more ex uh, on hits triggers and more attacks that uh, do stuff for us when we are on a defensive version. Uh, when it comes to the rest of the deck, we're running the bare minimum of uh, equipment, which uh, is uh, Chrono Seeds, every matchup, probably the best card in the game. Finless Spring Tunic, really good card, works awesome with Chrono Seeds. We're running uh, uh, Creative Fist, uh, block 2, block 1, good for now Guardian. We have two, three different pair of boots. We have the Time Skippers for Prism, Northern Boots for Rune Blades, and apparently Kano. And then Ironhide Legs for everybody else. And uh, weapons of choice are Winter's Whale compared with Ramparts of Ram's Head. Uh, the reason why we didn't put in anything more than this is that, that we wanted to maximize the options to sideboard our main decks and uh, we ran out of equipment slots. Uh, if you fare more Kano, of course, you need to add in some Null Rune. You can also look at the uh, weapons, but uh, this is where we ended up. Then we have uh, the blue attacks. Uh, the reason why we're running so few elements is to get all of these cards in. We are running uh, Cradle Crush, just a great great attack. Glacial Footsteps, a uh, good way to finish games. We have still have 12 ice cards, so we can get it dominated pretty easy. We have uh, Machu Grande, same thing, good ways to end games. We have Disable, it's a good card, good on hit effect, especially when you compare it with, with you add in Starvis ability. Uh, disabled us a lot and then we m managed to fit one more slot so we just added in a Thunderquake. We want blue cards that has a solid on hit effect or that we can gain do dominate on and we want them all to be able to pop perils when we face Prism. Uh, when we get to more of the red attacks, we do we are running, of course, the three Okinols, just probably the best one of the best attacks. Uh, with uh, when you starve ability and then fuse it, you go up to eleven, and they need to block the full eleven, otherwise the on hit effect comes. Spinal crush, similar things. You gain to eleven. Uh, you take away go again. Just an awesome card. Crippling crush. Two copies. It's a bit, a little bit clunky to get it off but with the seven cost, and when you don't run Tectonic, uh, it's hard to always have the resources to to play it. But it's still a great card. Still blocks for three, and then we added in uh, two red Snow Under. Uh, this was a way to get some more power, some more on hit triggers, and also have some three block in the deck. Uh, when you lose Autumn's Touch you lose a lot of 3 blocks, so we wanted to add in as much 3 blocks as possible, and this can do a similar job. It's not an element, but everything else is really good with the Snow Wonder. Uh, 
Then we have the defensive suite. This deck was really trying to play a defensive controlling type of game. So we're running uh, 12 D-Rex, we're running the Fates and Sinks. We're running uh, the Turn Timbers. We have 11 Earth cards, so it's pretty easy to, to fuse the card. And then we're running the three Staunches. Uh, Staunch and Turn Timber because we run Rampart, so the extra resource can be used to Rampart or it can be used to Crown. So when we pitch a blue card, we can use all the resources really efficiently. Then we have some extra cards that is mostly for Prism. We have some Leader Charge. And then, of course, all Star Wars decks and probably the, be the best cards in the game. We have the three Pulses. That is our 80 card deck. And uh, now I'm going to talk about how we sideboard the deck into some of the more bigger matchups. Okay, so uh, this is the 60 cards we run against the uh, chain. So the goal against chain is to take away everything that doesn't block and everything that is a non-attack. The only non-attack we, we, we leave in the deck is the three channel Lake Frigid, because they're blue. Uh, if, you get a, if they play slow in the late game on shackle 5, 6 or 7, you can play it out and uh, really take a lot, of, um, a lot of their power, but most of the time it's just a pitch and three cards is okay, and they're blue, so we can pitch them. We take out uh, the lead charges. Uh, they're blocked two and they're non-attacks, so no good. We take out one of the red break rounds, it's a block two. We don't want to use block twos if we don't have to. We take out the uh, Pulse of Cattle Hold. It's a non-attack, so we cannot block it. It's not a blue, so it's, we can't really pitch it. We take out some lightning cards. We take out the Pulse and the Blinks. They are instants, so we cannot block with any of them. We take out the flashes, they are non-attacks, so again, we, we don't want to block with them, and they are only block two if we are forced to do it, and then the Channel Lake Fridges is just better. So we're running all 12 of our ice cards. Uh, we're running nine lightning cards with lightning search, heaven claws, it's the lightning cards of blocks. We're running all six blue earth cards, and we have three evergreens to still keep the earth amount up. Uh, for blues, uh, we use run all our block three blues. They, you can pitch them, you can block them, they do everything you want in this matchup. Uh, we're running all the red attacks that have three block. Uh, they block for three, that's the biggest reason we have them. Uh, it, it can be okay to use some of these to put, put pressure on if the chain player slows down, but mostly they're there for our three block. We're running all 12 of our directs. Uh, the game plan is to fatigue the chain opponent. Uh, so all the all these are really good. Uh, the turn timbers, the six is good enough. So even though you're going down a bit on the earth cards, it's good enough to block with the six. You have the shield or the crown to fill out less damage. We only run the one pulse and we of course put in another boots to stop as much as keen as possible. When we get to the late game, the, the important thing to think about is don't give them the non-attack with the channel like frigid because then they can d give damage with uh, invert existence for free. Uh, the other thing is to try to find one of your six, uh, six or seven attacks, so the, uh, the red evergreens, uh, you have the snow unders, you have the oak and uh, Trying to find them, try to get them into arsenal so that when they play Urser, you can attack Urser and kill it. Other than that, just don't leak damage, play safe, and you should be able to f fatigue most chains. Okay, so here we have our uh, 60 cards for Prism. So when we face Prism, we want as much to go again as possible. Uh, this is why we run the full suite of uh, elemental cards. We have all our blue uh, blue attacks. They all pop heralds, so we have a lot of herald poppers, so we can do that and fatigue them that way. We have our red attacks. Again, they are really good at popping heralds, but we also can use them when we have a chance to go face, clear some shields, give some damage. The big part about this deck and what you as a guardian probably need to look at is Time Skippers, Lead the Charge. Uh, Lead the Charge is really good. All of your Earth cards that cost three to attack with, you can get, give them, get an action point. You have the Snow Unders, you have the Okinols, you get an action points. You have a lot of the Ice cards with the Frost Fang, Icy Encounter, Winter's Grasp. All of those cards and even all the blue Earth cards it gives you action points when you play them with Lead the Charge. We have time skippers, 
So from a, uh, from a three blue hand, if we have uh, the lightning surge in hand, we can uh, pitch blue, time skippers, play lightning surge, break an aura, pitch any blue to the hammer and break one more aura. And then the thing that makes Star Wars really good against Prism that other Guardians doesn't have is the Blink, which give, gives us the same thing. So Blink is just more copies of Time Skippers. We just play any card, preferably Lightning Surge or a cheap attack, attack an aura, play Blink, hit the hammer into something else. Make sure you don't waste your leader charges and Blinks to just do some like 2-3 damage uh, phase and then hit an aura. These cards are meant to hit the double auras when they get starting to get all the auras out so you don't lose tempo. The way you lose this matchup is if they get three to four auras out, they can really get, get the value going. You should have enough uh, poppers in your attacks so they shouldn't be able to harass you down with the heralds. So you should have the life buffer to play. Use shield, use crown to block the shields when, they, when they're coming in and then just have a calm game and just play it out. Okay, here we have the, the cards against uh, Starvo. We're running 61 cards against Starvo. Uh, we don't really that worried about fatigue, but we, do, we like all the cards we have here. Uh, for Ice, we took out the, uh, the Blizzards. We don't really worry about the go again aspect. It doesn't really do that much, so just take out the Blizzards. For Lightning, we took out the Blinks and the Lightning Surges. We don't really need the action points. It's not about getting more action points, it's about blocking efficiently, getting to your second cycle. We just keep all the pulses, we keep all the earth cards, uh, we put in, put on the iron hide legs. Every time you're not facing arcane damage or, or prism, iron hide legs is the play. You usually have resources left when you pitch and it blocks for two. Keep all the blue, blue attacks, really good blocking cards, fuels your place. We have the red cards. The MVP in this game is definitely Okinold. Uh, don't worry about blocking with uh, with the cripplings and snow wonders and stuff like that. It's the Okinol that's gonna win the game for you. The big difference there is that Okinol, when you fuse, when you Starvo and fuse it, it's going, they need to block 11. The crippling crush, when you Bravo and uh, Starvo and uh, it, you, they only need to block 10. And it's not about the damage; it doesn't really matter. It's about the tempo you get when you get take cards out of your hands. This deck is all about the second cycle or maybe even third cycle. You have all the 12 D-Reacts to just block them out efficiently. You have the big attacks to block out their big attacks. You have the Fates and Sync to not leak too much damage. I know we're only at uh, six Lightning cards, so it's all about finding the six cards, stacking them together with the Earth, uh, and, lightning, earth and Ice cards, and uh, find your good attacks, it's preferably the Okinols. In the late game, what you, where you, sh you should be in a position where you can put the Pulse of Candlehold, the Pulse of Ice and Loft, one Oak and Old, and preferably one of the Ice cards together, uh, Lightning cards together. So what you do when you get this hand in the late game is uh, you, fuse, uh, you fuse Starvo. You play the Oak and Old, pitching the Flash. Uh, and then, depending on how many other Okinols you have in, in the graveyard, it, you, don't, you only need one Okinol to pull this off. You then play your Pulse of Candlehold, recur two Okinols, keep the Pulse in, in hand, and then you need to make sure that you have more uh, uh, Lightning cards coming up, so that when you draw up, you dr you're drawing up more Lightning cards and more Okinols. So even if you draw the two Okinols you put on top, and one Lightning card, you're fine. You can play one out, pitching the other Lightning card, Arsenal in the third oak and old, and then you just need to drop into one more flash card, keeping the pulse in hand, and now you have three oak and in a row. That's kind of your like your end game where you win. Where you win, this card, this game is all about getting to that point where you can use that recursion. We have a pulse of candle hold. You have the super strong cards with the oak and olds, and if you can get two to three of in a row in the late game and even add in some hammer swings when they don't have any cards. Uh, you, you can take the game from when you're sub 10 life and they are uh, plus 20, 30 life, you can still take the game, you can still win. Life differential doesn't really matter in this game, it's all about getting to the point where you can get your Okinol stack off, and when you do, you're gonna win. If you cannot get there because you missed the pitch stack or they 
come through and do too much damage, you don't use the D-Rex efficiently, uh, the game is going to be hard and you're probably going to lose.